So let me ask you this, though. And you know, in my former life, you leave, you got problems. Right. You know, you're not allowed to. Right. You didn't face that then. It wasn't. It's, it's the power of God in that, you know, you just want everybody to be able to understand and feel it, yeah. you know, how it is life-changing. With me, it was one verse, you know, when I had the whole world falling down on me. Yeah. I had the government upset with me because I wouldn't cooperate. I yeah. had guys on the street because I was walking away. Yeah. My dad, be, be, you know, disowned me. Yeah. And um, one verse, Proverbs 16, 7, mm -hmm. when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord yeah. right here, even Amen. his enemies are at peace with him. Amen. And the Lord spoke to me through that, and it caused me to read on and get to some other verses that really, during my time in solitary, almost three years, yeah. that, uh, you know, I just, uh, I studied, and I, I want to ask you this, you know, I say this all the time, I'm not a perfect Christian, mm -hmm. I'm certainly better than I was before Absolutely. I came to the Lord, but my faith is rock solid. Mm because of the work that I put in, not only to know my Bible, but sure. to, to see what the Lord has done, not only in my life, but in the lives of other people, right. to see that it was so real. And then for me, it was all about evidence. The evidence that supports biblical authority is so strong, right. so powerful. And you know, in my ministry, I try to teach people that. I said, look, don't take my word for it. You know, there's a there's so much evidence supporting the validity of Scripture. So true. And then you see how God works in their life. So, you know, and I want people to understand. I mean, I know you're a lot better than you were before, but I'm yeah. sure you don't claim to be perfect because yeah, yeah. we all, you know, we all fall short at times. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure your faith is rock solid. Yeah, yeah. Based upon your experience, what the Lord has done in your life. I mean, listen to that. You know, your your dad now accepting you and having yeah. this relationship, which you would have never had had you not come to the Lord. Amen. It's unbelievable. Yeah, amen. And you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's always the women in our lives. It really you know, is. Your mom, my yeah. God, what a, what a saint. Yeah, huh? seriously. And how does she feel now? Oh, about she's so this? happy. Yeah. But she's always like rubbing it in my She's like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Acts 16.31 is, is really, my testimony is also part of her testimony. So mm -hmm. everywhere she goes, she also talks about that. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like, like, you know, she does the church choir and she does the translation still at church and the parents come and they're like, oh, my son is, you know, 14, 15 and he's vaping and, the, and she's like, it's okay. You know, my son, his name's Johnny. Mm. Do you know how bad he was? He was worse than <laughs> yeah. that. So she plants hope inside of people, you know, yes. and, um, you know, in terms of the perfection aspect too, you know, I, I believe that um, God's word has to really be above our thoughts because true sin is like i said unbelief meaning trusting our thoughts above the word of god so if god says for example water is wine in our eyes it's water we tasted it, its water it's filled in six water pots mm -hmm. but if god is saying no it's wine and it's the best tasting wine we must in order to trust god throw away our thoughts throw away what we see and throw away what we feel mm -hmm. and that was the the message of that so my mom did the same thing mm -hmm. she said oh when i look at my son johnny He's a lost cause. You call me a monster. You're a monster. You come out, you know, and you're 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 still doing this crazy stuff. And I heard this about you and that about you. You're still selling drugs. You did so many years in prison. Like you're institutionalized. There's something wrong with you. You know, you're mental. But then when she believe the word of God, she threw all of that away and mm -hmm. started to say opposite things, breathing life into me, essentially, mm -hmm. breathing hope. Yeah. You know, the power of the tongue is really important. You know, Amen. so I always ask my mom, why, why did you say that, mom? Like, what made you believe? And she said, pastor explained to her one time about Abraham, you know, um, I'm sorry, about Adam, where Adam names all of the, the animals in Genesis, mm -hmm. you know, and I always wondered why did God do that? You know, was God too tired to name the animals? <laughs> But what God was saying was, whatever Adam said, so shall it be. So if he called it a rhino, it was a rhino. If he called it, you know, um, an eagle, it was an eagle. So whatever you say, so shall it be. He was trying to point that out. So my right. mom was continuously saying, I'm a monster, I'm a sinner, I'm not, I'm not changed. And that's what was coming out of that, right? But she started to breathe life into me through those words and really i started to change because of my mom yeah. you know so i was able to see that this bible this 
this book that they say is man made the people who don't believe it, there's no way i've read it 21 times going on 22 and i'm like man every single time i read it there's always something that gets you know That's discovered right. you know so it's a beautiful thing yeah. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable and let me ask you how did your uh, your former gang associates accept this transformation so at first of course they were like they didn't like it you know they said come on johnny like we know who you are because I would say, I'm perfected and righteous through Christ. And they'll be like, okay, mm -hmm. Johnny, if you're righteous, we're all righteous. You know, mm -hmm. because we remember, don't you remember the time that you, and they would remind me, and I didn't like that. At first I was angry, but I tried to disassociate myself. But when I told, talked to the pastor about that, you know, because I lived with the church a year after that, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, pastor, my friends are this way. Like, do I just cut them off? And he's like, why would you cut them off? You know, you should acknowledge what they're saying in front of god so yes you were that person but they don't know that you've changed so if you just continuously live well you don't even have to preach to them don't even push the gospel to them and i was like what that's crazy i thought now i got to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth he's like because they don't know but when they see you and they see the transformation they're it's going to pique their their interests it'll make their spirit yearn and that's true so little by little they started to notice that i didn't have to carry a gun anymore they started to notice that other enemies, you know, people who are, you know, the opposition were respecting me. Like, hey, Johnny, I heard about you. Blah, blah, blah. They shake my hand and they're like, yo, what the heck? Like, we're, we're, there's bloodshed over these, these gangs. You know, we've years of war and we're like shaking hands, you know, breaking bread, eating and stuff, we're taking pictures together. So we're all like uniting and they were recognizing that, my friends. And then they started to see, again, how my mom had that peace. They started to see the peace inside of me. And they were like, yo, that's crazy. Like, how come you're not out here? You don't have to drink. You don't have to do coke anymore. You don't have to smoke anymore. You don't have to do anything. Like, you're just cool. You know, you're, you're happy. And then they started to come to me with their problems. Hey, bro, you know, I feel empty, bro. Have you ever felt empty? Yeah, yeah, there's a verse for that, actually. Mm -hmm. And I'll help them. And, and a lot of my friends now come to church. It's pretty cool. So let me ask you this, though. And, you know, in my former life, you leave, you got problems, right. you know, you're not allowed to. Right. You didn't face that then. It wasn't. I didn't technically leave. That's the thing. That was mm -hmm. the difference. You know, we, we, we say it as you graduated. So mm -hmm. I, I, my, my uncles, my cousins, my own brother were all from the gang. So, like, if I leave, it's not like they could stop being my brothers, cousins, and uncles. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not active in that. And, and they understand that. You know, my OGs, everyone, we've had meetings. We've sat down. I said, look. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dry snitching. I'm not talking about cold mm -hmm. cases. I'm not talking about open cases. I'm not talking about anything. I'm just talking about my testimony and how God has helped me. So the first couple interviews, they were like, okay, cool. Let me, let me check it out, which is beautiful. Cause that planted mm -hmm. the seed inside of their hearts, you know? That's great. And from that, they were like, wow, like that's cool. So pastor told me like, you don't have to denounce them. You don't have to talk trash about them. You don't have to bring anything evil about them. Cause at the end of the day, we're all interconnected through mm -hmm. the sin. You know, we're all the same in God's eyes. You just have to show them love and it's okay. So nowadays, you know, when they say, let's go out to eat, I'll go out to eat with them, but it's not like I can't go to the club with you guys. I can't go to here and throw money and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's really good. And they, there's a mutual level of respect. It's pretty cool. And I think that's, that's only God, God sent because mm -hmm. there's like, you know, that life, like mm -hmm. you're either in the dirt or, you know, yeah. you get exiled basically. So yeah. And that's happened to other, other people that tried to leave. They were, they ended up like that too, but I didn't. Well, Johnny, let me ask you this. I always, uh, I always call the mob life, the gang life, mm -hmm. evil lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And I want to clarify that. I don't call the guys evil. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. We were one of them. Right. I happen to be very fortunate, very blessed to be who I am. Sure. But I call the lifestyle evil because I don't know any family of any member of that life that hasn't been destroyed in yeah. some way. So and so true. any lifestyle that does that to a family is a bad lifestyle. Yeah. And the reason I preach that is because I want these young people to understand you're not only bringing heartache upon yourself, but yeah. it's your family that you're Absolutely. destroying. And when you get to them, you know, in that way, uh, it starts to resonate a little bit. Absolutely. And, you know, I had a, I had a young, uh, young uh, African-American kid in prison that was always in trouble. And I really got to him one day because he, he loved his mom, but he was always winding up in, in a hole. His mom would come in, three little kids, vending machine, a whole bit, yeah. and then he's not there. You know how it goes. Mm. And I told him one day, after he got out of the hole, I said, Kimmy, I want to ask you a question. He said, what? I said, you love your mother? He said, oh, yeah, I love my mom. She's great. I said, you're a liar. You don't love your mom. 
he looked at me, he threw his chest out. I said, relax. I said, you're a liar. And I went through the whole thing. I said, your mother does this, all this work for you. She's working two jobs, vending machines, sends your money in commissary. You don't have the decency to come in there and have a visit with her. And he broke down in tears. Finally got to him. So sometimes you got to really just lay it on people in the right way and That's make true. them understand because there's some kind of mental block there. They don't get it absolutely. until their eyes are open. Absolutely. And that's kind of what happened with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Amazing, amazing story. So what are you doing now? <clears throat> so I do prison ministry now. I'm mm. also an international chaplain, so I could go to any country preaching. Wow. Hospices, uh, hospitals, you know, prisons and stuff, yeah. So I go to mental hospitals here and there. I do, um, you know, convalescent homes, and I just pray for people and preach the gospel. Really? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's beautiful. I do it full time. Um, you know, obviously do speaker stuff, you know, people mm -hmm. fly me out and speak at their churches and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I do like uh, a lot of mentoring too. That's kind of something that's new where people just meet me once a week over the phone, over zoom online. And yeah, and I do a, a zoom Bible study. So, yeah. You know, I don't think there's anything more significant <clears throat> today than mentorship for these young people. Absolutely. You know, Johnny, so many people, I mean, you grew up with a, you know, a dad that was, that was rough but eventually turned around. But some of these young people, they don't have a dad. So true. You know, most of the kids in school that I sat with, even before I was a Christian, they had the same script. You could write the same script for every one of them. Broken yeah. home, no dad, mom trying to do her best, gravitate to a local gangbanger, yeah. end up in prison. For sure. It's, uh, and they need guys like yourself. It's an amazing, you know, service that you perform. Uh, certainly bringing people to the Lord, but they need people like you, really, you know, so I'm, uh, again, very proud of, uh, of what you're doing, and, you know, the fellowship, hopefully we'll stay, uh, we'll yeah, stay in touch course. with one another Absolutely. throughout this, and any way that I can support you in your ministry, um, and maybe you can, you know, join in with me on some things. Yes, so, I would love to. Yeah. Know, it's one body, one kingdom. That's Amen. it. Amen. You know, everything else we do is okay, but really it's all about the Lord. Amen. And the ministry. Amen. 100%. Yeah, it really is. Amen. Just, I wanted to know about going into, at 12 years old, mm. can you just maybe just talk a little bit about how it was as a 12 year old too? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, I had an uncle that was in youth authority for quite some time, and yeah. he was like 16, but yeah. 12 is, yeah, it was crazy. you're a child. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went there, I remember the first night that I was there, so in California Youth Authority, it's more like gang banging, whereas in prison, it's more, at least in California, it's more race, right? Mm -hmm. So when I went in there, I was 12 and I had to fight like a 16 year old. I had a knife pulled on me the first night, you know, they were like, I'm going to stab you. I had seen people get stabbed. Honestly, I've seen people get raped. These are kids doing things to other kids, mm -hmm. you know? And I knew right then and there, like the mentality was, you're not gonna make it out of here if you don't like yourself become a monster, you know? And um, that, mind you, that's with all the claustrophobia that you have to deal with, with all the predatory stuff. So it was just very crazy, you know? And I, I really feel like when I got out of YA, I became, it, it cultivated this mindset of like, you, you, you're gonna, you're gonna die any, any day. So it, it had like PTSD early on, you know? And I was just, very um i don't know it was just reckless all the time and crazy i i would feel like i was really crazy at that time wow. well johnny let me ask you you know there's uh, i have a pretty diverse group of followers and uh, we have a lot of young you know young men and women uh that watch this if you had to give any advice to any of them watching right now and i know sure. they're going to be a bigger <coughs> audience with you uh, if you can look into the camera and talk directly to them and sure. tell them whatever's in your heart so the one thing I would say is the world teaches us to trust our thoughts, follow our feelings, um, believe in ourselves. But the Word of God says, lean not on your own understanding. It says in Genesis 6, 5 that all of your thoughts are only evil continually. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked, who can know it? So our hearts deceive us. They lie to us, they change because one minute we're happy, next minute we're sad. So if you guys really want to live peaceful like I am, live kind of based and just not living this up and down lifestyle, this empty, sad, empty, happy lifestyle, um, I would advise to distrust your thoughts and learn the Word of God. Because our thoughts change every day. Word of God tells us that it doesn't change. His Word doesn't change. So we can f trust in something that doesn't change. For example, a person who lies all the time, says one thing, does another thing. We don't trust those people. Funny thing is, though, we don't recognize that we, our hearts do that to us every day.
but yet we trust this feeling. And it's, it's weird that the world is telling you about individualism, telling you that you matter and validate your feelings. And it's no wonder why we're living this happy, sad lifestyle. And, and I'm not better than any of you guys. I have a GED education. Um, the one thing I learned was when I denied my thoughts and I denied what I felt in my feelings and my, you know, my, my thought process, and I accepted the word of God inside of my heart, I was able to live peacefully. So if you guys really want to live peacefully, please distrust your thoughts or think about at least your thoughts from time to time. Um, not all thoughts are from us. And yeah. Johnny, what would you say to some of the naysayers out there that have always said, well, Christianity is just a, a crutch, it's a sign of weakness. Uh, what would you say to those people? Yeah, I would say, um, I understand. I came from that as well. I used to think Christians were weak, and I used to think that, you know, a lot of Christians were hypocritical. But for me personally, um, every religion teaches you to do well. You know, Buddhism, Islam. I was Muslim for three years as well in prison. And, um, but Christianity was the only religion that teaches us we can't do it without somebody saving us. I couldn't get out of my depression. I could only maintain it with Zoloft and Prozac and antidepressants. Um, I couldn't get out of my anger. I could only maintain. And that's why God had to lift me out of that. So I would say, please, if you can, you know, keep an open mind that, you know, everyone just wants to be happy. And um, there's a lot of church hurt, which we apologize for. But there's also a lot of people who don't know how to preach, who don't know the heart of God, mm -hmm. and are also trying to figure things out themselves. I would ask that you guys don't blanket, you know, and say, hey, this guy hurt me, so I'm going to just say everybody and, and, and loop them all together. There are people like us who really want to plant hope, who really love with the heart of God. And if you guys can give a chance to hear what I'm saying and see the heart that I have, then you'll be able to really um, live happier. And that's the end goal, is to be happy. Because when you're happy, your family's happy. When your family's happy, it takes family, one family at a time, and this world can change, you know, so. Amen. Yeah, and, and one last thing, Johnny. I know, you know, I've said this many, many times, that it's, it's such a burden to carry around anger, resentment, um, <coughs> and all those feelings that get you angry with somebody. So you are obviously able to release that with your dad and just let people understand how how liberating it is mm -hmm. to release that anger yeah. and, and hate that you might have for sure. someone. Forgiveness, a lot of people think, is for the other person, but true forgiveness is for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, when you forgive somebody, you're actually free from the bonds of that torture and that you know rage and that anger and that envy and jealousy. So I would say, you know, if, if, if you're not going to do it for other people, that's fine. At least for yourself, you know, to break the chains. You know, Yes, I've been to prison, and some of you guys here maybe, um, you know, have not been to prison. But we're all prisoners in our heart. We're all locked away and, and confined by some type of thing. And that's sin for, for us. For other people, it can be addiction. Other people, it would be anger. But to break free from all of that, we do have to learn to think outside of ourselves and to think about other people as well you know and to think that hey that person who hurt you is also somebody who is going through you know this generational curse through trauma themselves mm -hmm. as well and once we recognize that it's kind of like a bill a, a, a house i'll use an analogy if you look at a house for example there's a builder and there's a renter and a vandal so a person who built the house let's say somebody comes and vandalizes the house graffiti breaks the window do we then blame the renter or the homeowner no, we blame the vandal, right? There are people who, for example, my father was the house. And when I looked at him, somebody came and vandalized him inside of his heart. You know, I was blaming him for a long time. And that caused me a lot of stress and him a lot of stress. But when I saw that there was a vandal, an external source that was leading him and dragging him, I was now able to take my eyes off of him and blame the vandal. And that's something that applies to everybody. You know, yes, we all struggle as well. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not better than anybody else. So if we're all interconnected to the struggle, we, once we think about it from that perspective, compassion is the byproduct. Forgiveness is the byproduct of understanding that we're all the same. We can humanize people in this way. Amen. Well, Jai, I don't know if we, we have much more to say, <laughs> but, uh, you know, look, it just shows you the power of the Lord in anybody's life. Amen. You know, to, uh, <clears throat> Not only the power of forgiveness, but how to, uh, you know, just turn someone's life around. Amen. It's amazing. And I know 
you attribute that all to uh, the power of Jesus Christ in your life. Glory so, God. Hey, listen, I hope this is the first of many times we get together. I'm, yes. I'm fascinated with your story. I think your testimony is better than mine, to be honest <laughs> with you. I really mean that you because you, uh, you really had... Uh, you had a lot to come out from. So, Amen. hey, God bless, God bless, and thank you so much for, you. for coming. Thank you, thank okay. you. All right, so there you have it. I mean, like I told you, I'm sure he didn't disappoint anyone. What an incredible story of transformation. Do you understand what this young man went through? An abusive father, a mom who, you know, was being abused by the dad. He was abused by the dad, beat up. You know, went to the street as a result of a hatred that he had for his father. Hatred, it drove him to the street. Unlike mine, I love my father, and that drove me to the street. See the parallels there? When somebody has an influence on you, positive or negative, how it could push you into something, okay? He gets to the street, becomes a hardcore gang member. And I mean hardcore. At the age of 12, he goes to prison. The age of 12, goes through that, spends a couple of years, comes out, okay? Gets involved with the gang even more heavily. What happens then? Goes back to prison, does a total of 10 or 12 years, unbelievable and then it all changes it all changes when his mom accepts Christ and brings him doesn't force him but through a series of situations he gets to uh, meet a pastor that it had such an impact on his life you know for those of you out there that think Christianity is a crutch not a crutch not at all okay it's 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 an anchor in our life it gives us strength and I want to make this very very clear you know, because I know people talk about my faith all the time. I am by no means a perfect Christian. I am better than I was at one time in my life, no doubt. But I will tell you this, like Johnny, my faith is rock solid. Based upon the evidence, based on what the Lord has done in my life, based on what I've seen him do in the lives of others, and based on what he's done in Johnny's life. This isn't, this isn't make-believe. This is real. For all you young men, you young women out there, any age, doesn't matter. If you really are determined to find some peace in your life, to make a transformation, to come out of a difficult, a bad situation, then I encourage you, man. I don't hit you over the head with it. I'm not trying to turn you into a Christian. I'm not imposing my faith on you. But like Johnny, we're obligated to share our faith. And look, release the burdens, man. Release the devils in your life. I'm telling you, it's the only way to go. And people, I don't want to put fear in you, but remember this. We're passing through this life. There is an afterlife. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Nobody has to go to the bad place. We all have a choice. The God gave us a free will. And I'm telling you all, you will find peace in Jesus Christ the same way Johnny did, the same way I have, and the same way billions of Christians throughout history and that are alive today have done the same. So. I hope you were encouraged by this, people. I certainly am. An incredible story. I mean, his testimony is more dynamic than mine, in my view. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I hope you're inspired by it. But more importantly, I hope you're encouraged to look at the Bible, uh, to seek the Lord, uh, because that's the answer to all of our issues in life. How do I always leave you, my friends? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless each and every one of you. And I hope you are really blessed by this podcast. And yes, I'll see you next time.